Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now this lesson is actually a fairly highly requested lesson, especially from students who are on my AQA and Edexcel courses. Some of you guys have literally sent me messages, put it in the comments and so on, that your school has chosen Anita and me as your modern set text. And you'd find it super, super helpful if I just did a really quick mind map summarizing the entire novel because it is a bit of a dense novel, okay? So what I want to do within this lesson is to summarize in a nutshell all the major and the key events that happen in Anita and Me. And remember that Anita and Me, which obviously has Mina as the protagonist, it is what we call a Bill Dung's Roman, okay? It's a coming of age novel which charts Mina's development through her early life and her early years, okay? So make sure when you're writing about Mina and Me, and of course, talking about the novel itself and the genre it belongs to, it's a Bill Dung's Roman. So as you can see here behind me, I've created a mind map summarizing in the 16 steps all the key events that happen within this novel, which actually, if I'm being completely honest, it's one of my favorite novels, okay? It's quite dense, but it's actually really, really funny, and it's just a really, really nice novel, okay? So do give it a chance and do try to read it, okay? Now, let's go over the key events, starting off with the beginning, okay? When we meet the main protagonist, Mina. Now, Mina, who is nine when we first meet her, we learn that Mina and her family, her mother and father, are the only Indians and the only Indian family in a place called Tollington in the West Midlands in England. Remember that Tollington is a fictional place that is set in the West Midlands, okay? And Mina is growing up within this fairly small community and her and her family are the only Indians in their community. Now, Mina ends up befriending Anita, okay? The titular character of this novel. So Anita is two years older than Mina and Mina is drawn to her, okay? She's a bit of a rebel, she's very exciting, she's unlike what Mina is used to. And Anita, who's a little bit of a rebel, encourages Mina to misbehave. For example, in one particular incident, uh, Anita encourages Mina when they're going to a charity uh, shop she encourages Mina to steal a collection tin, tin which has money that has been given charitably to people, which Mina does, okay? So she's heavily influenced by Anita, but in a negative way. We also learned that Anita, of course, she, unlike Mina, is from a very unstable family. In fact, her mother ends up leaving and abandoning her and their family. So in contrast to Mina, who comes from a very stable and a fairly traditional Indian family, Anita, who's English, her family is quite unstable. And also we find that Anita has a bit of a malevolent side to her. She's got a manipulative side to her because Mina is one of three key close friends of Anita alongside Sherry and Fat Sally. And what Anita tends to do almost is like a kind of cruel game. She plays them off against each other. She creates rivalries between them. It's up to Mina as well as Sherry and Fat Sally to almost prove themselves to Anita. She's, they're always kept on their toes, okay? So we find that Anita is a very manipulative and a bit of a malevolent character. Now, we then learn as the story develops that there is a planned motorway that's gonna be cutting through Tollington and it will end up destroying parts of Tollington once it's built. And there's a lot of people who live in that community who are actually very, very unhappy about these winds of change, okay? So this motorway, which symbolizes the overarching change that's happening in British society at the time, a lot of locals are very, very unhappy. And there's one particular village fete, okay, a party, and at this local fete, uh, another character called Sam Lowbridge, right? He's kind of similar age to Anita. He, again, is a massive rebel, and he usually is quite nice to Mina. However, to show his outrage when he attends this fete, he actually yells very racist insults when he is criticizing this motorway in front of everybody, including Mina and her father who are at the fete. And we can see that there's now a shift, right? So Mina starts increasingly becoming aware of her own ethnicity and her own, her own heritage, which makes her realize that she's perceived very differently by English people and English society. So now this starts creating a rift between Mina and the people who she grew up around, who she simply thought they were all the same, okay? Now, as the story develops during this same local fete, remember that, you know, Mina is really, really close and she's she just loves Anita. She sees a fortune teller with Anita, okay? And this fortune teller tells Mina that her mother will be unwell, 
But also this fortune teller tells her to beware of Anita, who's not a real friend. And so this really weighs heavily on Mina. She tries to brush it off when she leaves the FET, but it weighs heavily on her. She starts wondering, okay, what's gonna happen to my mom? But also what's gonna happen to Anita, who is a really close friend of mine. I really admire her. And you know, she, she almost doesn't want to believe what the fortune teller has told her. Now, one of the fortune teller's predictions comes right because Mina's mom does seemingly become very unwell, but actually it's because she's pregnant and she ends up being rushed out of home by the ambulance unexpectedly to Mina's shock and surprise. And then she gives birth to Sunil, who's Mina's younger brother. But because, you know, they don't have any help, it's only the mother, the father, as well as Mina, Mina's mother becomes very overwhelmed by all the tasks she has to do with a newborn as well as having a job and so on. Therefore, they end up calling her own mother from India to come in order to help Mina's mother look after Sunil and also just look after the house, okay? So Mina eventually meets her grandmother, Nanima, who comes to help her, but also she plays a really important role in now teaching Mina about her Indian heritage and her Indian culture, something that Mina was really not very connected to and not very attuned to, okay? So her grandmother's presence becomes really, really powerful to her. And what's also interesting is the grandmother, even if she can't speak English, when she does eventually meet Anita, she doesn't like her, okay? All of these little subtle hints that are being dropped to Mina to show her and to foreshadow the eventual rift and the destruction of her relationship with Anita, who she looked up to so much. Now, as the story progresses, M Mina is once again reminded of her heritage. She's once again reminded that Tollington doesn't see people like her of her Indian heritage as equal or as the same as British people because there is a racist attack that takes place against an Indian man and Mina when she goes to visit Sherry, whose parents own a horse farm, a really nice horse farm, you know, um, Sherry, w when um, Sherry and Anita are talking, they think that Mina is out of earshot. Anita brags to Sherry and Fat Sally about how she and Sam Lowbridge took part in the racist attack of this Indian man. So Mina hears this, right? They can't, they can't see Mina, so they think that she's away with the horse and she's kind of playing with the horse and they don't realize that she's actually nearby. Anita hears this and she realizes that, uh, or rather Mina hears this, she hears what Anita says and she realizes that Anita and Sam have this very strong racist streak and this causes her to do something very self-destructive. She decides to recklessly mount one of Sherry's horses. She rides it around recklessly because she's so angry at what she's discovered. And what this leads, uh, and what happens is she falls off the horse, breaking her leg, and therefore she then has to be hospitalized, okay? So now the events start accelerating. When in hospital, Mina ends up meeting uh, another boy called Robert in hospital, okay? He's her, he's her age. However, he seems extremely ill. However, for the time that she stays there, they form a bond, a relationship, and actually this becomes her first boyfriend. So she becomes really hopeful of when he comes out, you know, she's gonna have her first boyfriend, her first English boyfriend. However, uh, even if they grow close, once Mina gets well and leaves, Robert is left in the hospital. And then Mina receives a letter, so she kind of keeps on writing letters back, back and forth with Robert when she's at home and he's in hospital. And then one time when she doesn't hear from him, she receives a final letter from his family, which informs her that Robert has died, which really devastates Mina, okay? This chance at, you know, young love that she had and she thought she was gonna get, actually this chance is destroyed. And once more, she's alone, okay? Then, we find that Mina, because obviously she's discovered what she's discovered about Anita and Sam, she decides to distance herself from Anita, okay? And actually, she decides to really work hard because there's a local grammar school, which if she passes the 11 plus entry exams, she can go to that grammar school and not go to the state school that everybody is currently going to, including Anita, okay? So, Mina decides to distance herself from Anita and focuses on her 11 plus exams, studies really hard, becomes a good girl that her parents really want her to be. And of course, her parents are really delighted to see that she's taking the exams really seriously. And so she decides to take really, really seriously these entrance exams to enter this local grammar school 
school for really clever kids. However, the night before her exam, so her parents have to leave on a quick emergency, Anita is alone. She promises them, yep, I'm going to study and then tomorrow I'm going to be ready for my 11 plus exams. Everything's going to be fine. So parents leave, they trust that she's going to be okay. And whilst she's studying and preparing to go to sleep, she hears a knock on her door. She realizes that Tracy, Anita's younger sister, is there. Tracy looks distressed and Tracy tells her that she's worried that Anita is being hurt by Sam. So she says, look, I'm really sorry to disturb you, Anita, so late. I don't know who to turn to. I think Anita is being hurt by Sam because at this stage, Anita and Sam are dating, okay? And so Anita, despite her better judgment, decides to listen to Tracy and she follows her in the darkness to the hollow pond, okay, this marshy area. And when they do eventually fi find where Sam and Anita are, they realize that they're having sex. So this is the first real introduction that Anita has to this kind of world of the, uh, uh, or rather this adult world, right? So this is the first time she becomes aware of this concept of intercourse, okay? Then, when both her and Tracy realize what's going on, they're both shocked, and then, mean uh, Anita and Sam stop. Uh, then Mina, she sees Sam in this particular place. Okay, so it's still dark time, darkness, and now the story is becoming really, really tense. It's getting to its climax, its crescendo, right? So Mina then speaks to Sam. She's still angry. She's carrying all of this anger about Sam's character. And she decides to confront him quite openly. And she tells him, she confronts him about his racist behavior, which she sees as unacceptable. However, Sam does something really unexpected. He kisses her, right, after what he's done with Anita, which obviously Anita sees she's angry. And then the now the tensions really, really flare up between Anita, Sam, and especially Tracy, okay? So Tracy, Anita, and Sam get into a huge row, a huge fight. Remember, they're still in the darkness in the hollow ponds, right? No one can see what's going on. No one can see what they're doing. They're all just hitting each other, fighting each other. And then Tracy ends up falling into a pond and almost drowning. When Tracy falls, she's lashing about, you know, trying not to drown. Mina gets really terrified. So she runs to the nearest mansion that she can see for help. And she finds an elusive person called Harinda P. Singh, right? And another Indian man, when they thought that they were the only Indian family, so this elusive guy lives in this mansion with his French wife called Muriel, who Mina talks to, tells him, look, I have a friend, she's drowning in the pond, I really need some help. He comes out really quickly with Mina in tow and he rescues Tracy from the pond. Then, once Tracy's rescued and the police come, Tracy falsely accuses Anita and Sam, okay? So she falsely accuses them and now this um, cruel side of her comes out because she actually wants to see her sister and Sam being arrested, okay? So Tracy tells the police that Anita and Sam pushed her into the pond deliberately. But when Mina is then questioned for her statement, she decides to tell the truth. She decides that she's gonna turn over a new leaf. And actually, to, she tells the truth. She says, Tracy's lying. And this rescues Anita and Sam from any pro possible prison time, okay? So, Anita, so Mina decides to do the right thing. And the story ends with Harinda P. P. Singh, who's very wealthy. He buys the house off Mina's family and not only does Mina pass her 11 plus exams, but her family decide to sell the house to Harinda P. Singh and then move out of Tollington, okay? So this is basically the main sequence of events that happen summarized here in this mind map. And as I said, I think this is a really great story. Of course, it's a very dense novel. So if you find that you're getting really lost in the detail and finding it really hard to remember the key events that happened, make sure you just rewatch this mind map in this video and then refresh your memory on the key events. So thanks so much guys and I hope this video helped.